The CSB adjusted Cajiso PMI, that's the Purchasing Managers Index, fell to 44.3 points, that's it, the index fell to that, in May, from 47.4 in April. I said earlier it's a quarterly, of course it isn't, it's a monthly. Abdul Davids, who's Head of Research at Cajiso Asset Management, joins us from our Cape Town studios on a day, I suppose, Abdul, where we've just got to scratch our heads. If you took the platinum strike out of the picture, would we have had a similar result? Oh, that's a very difficult one. Um, clearly, what we would have seen is um, some of the spin-off effects of the platinum strike on the manufacturing sector as a whole. Uh, but I think uh, one probably uh, should be guided by what's happening globally, and we've seen European and um, the Chinese PMI strengthening and obviously ticking up. So we could have potentially seen an uptick in our PMI in the absence of this significant uh, platinum strike, yes. Sure, well, we'll need to because it's gone down so far. It was almost like a, a free fall in the past month when I'm looking at the, at the graph of the index here in front of me. Abdul, is this a... a yeah. Is there a bounce that's likely to happen um, because of international factors or if the strike continues, and I've been talking to business leaders who are saying they think that pe we're all underestimating the impact of that. Well, I mean, we could see the, the impact on the GDP numbers and uh, that was quite material already. Uh, if one looks, if one un unpacks the GDP numbers further, we would have seen that manufacturing also contracted uh, in terms of its contribution as well. Um, so clearly, uh, and anecdotally speaking to companies like ACI, for example, uh, they are seeing a material impact in terms of them servicing the, ma uh, the, the mining sector and the drop of activity and the impact that has had on their businesses as well. So what are the chances of us going back to the kind of levels that we saw in 2009? In, in terms of post the recession or during the recession? Well, yes, going uh, back into recession, we theoretically we're in recession, aren't we? Well, I think one probably needs another uh, negative contraction in terms of GDP for the second quarter to come through. But technically, I think it feels like a recession already. Uh, if one looks at the significant drop-off in activity levels, uh, that is one of the big contributors, contributors to the decline in the PMI that we saw. Um, and also, if one takes the employment index, for example, that's at a five-year low of around 37. Uh, so it definitely feels like it's a recession in terms of manufacturing in South Africa. Mm. And yet, our JSC powers on. Yeah, I think over the years we've seen a diminishing contribution from manufacturing to the South African economy and then moreover we've seen South African companies also globalizing as well. Uh, as we know companies like NASPERS, SAB, uh, BTI to a large extent have the bulk of their operations outside of South Africa. So I think uh, you can't necessarily draw that link between South African companies and the South African economy uh, and the stock market at this stage. Well, what's the best index, or is there one on the JSC that we can follow that gives you a reflection of how South Africa Inc. is performing? Uh, uh, clear, clearly, the way that you've put it, we've got Richmond, SAB Miller, mm. B, uh, BAT, mm. Glencore, many of these global companies now that dominate the JSC All Share Index. But is there one that we mm. should be following? It's a difficult one. I'll have to rack my brain for that one. I think uh, probably the retailers is probably uh, the one sector that is almost 80 to 90 percent um, uh, South African focused. So obviously, we know who is is now uh, making an acquisition in Australia, so that will change the dynamics a bit. Um, the industrial sector in terms of uh, the transport sector is probably a, a good indicator as well, uh, I would think. Mm. So it's not, uh, it's not really bad news for South African investors, what's happening in the economy, certainly not in the short term because we're benefiting or the retirement funds are benefiting from this globalization of South Africa Inc. But when you look longer term, we need to be a little bit concerned, surely. Definitely. I think uh, clearly from a, uh, not only an investment destination sentiment uh, towards South Africa point of view, but also in terms of, um, and we've seen the new cabinet, uh, obviously, and the reshuffle, reshuffle that has taken place on that side. But really uh, trying to, uh, already we've diminished in terms of our standings relative to other African countries, but really re-establishing South Africa as uh, the premier investment destination uh, on a global basis, but also in an African context as, as well, I think is quite important. So how is that going to happen? Well, that's, uh, I suppose, uh, a question for government, and uh, there's a whole host of stakeholders that obviously need to, to be part of that uh, process. But just uh, at a sort of current level, what we're seeing in the platinum sector, for example, uh, with the labor disruptions, etc., 
clearly um, the legislation that allows this to happen needs to be relooked at. Uh, the fact that we can have a strike as long as this uh, being projected, uh, being uh, obviously uh, having the impact that it has on the economy without the necessary ch uh, checks and balances in place to um, obviously prevent this from, from recurring in the future. What are those checks and balances? It's very difficult for me to comment. Uh, clearly, uh, I mean, I'm not a labor expert, but I would think that um, once you've passed sort of a month uh, in terms of a strike, uh, there should be a, a, a meaningful effort, and government should really get involved in terms of resolving a strike, especially to a significant sector like the mining sector is in South Africa. We know it's a, a significant contributor and earner of, of um, foreign exchange. So, so clearly, for significant sectors, and um, especially given this duration, uh, there should have been intervention a long time ago, yes. Mm. It is the biggest earner, isn't it, platinum of uh, foreign exchange into South Africa, and yet there's been a silence mm. from the Labour Minister, Mildred Olefant, apart from the fact that she got reappointed, I guess that's the last time we saw her in the headlines. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously the Labour Court tried to get involved, um, and uh, given where the parties are, I mean, obviously um, it seems to be quite rigid positions in terms of, uh, for example, the 12,500 Rand. Um, and I think you need serious intervention to obviously overcome that sort of uh, rigidity in terms of their positions. Mm. Our poor country. Abdul, is there any upside? Uh, when I look at the, the, the platinum strike, it seems to be at an impasse. You have a look at uh, the PMI that you've released today. That's in free fall. I talk to business leaders. They tell me they feel very proud of themselves having invested outside of South Africa's borders, which of course doesn't help us a whole lot here within the country. Where's the upside in all of this? Uh, at the moment it's very difficult to see. Um, clearly we have seen a, a slight weakness in the currency post the GDP numbers being released. And I suppose that's the only uh, small silver lining that we're seeing is that uh, at, at the margin, with a weaker currency, hopefully it will improve our competitiveness on a global basis. So that's about it. We're relying on the weak rand. Unfortunately, at the moment, that's all we've got uh, going for us. I think uh, from the labor competitiveness, from the issues that we spoke about previously, uh, the excess capacity that we've got in the labor market, uh, it's really difficult to see a significant turnaround in the short term. Abdul, just uh, from a broader perspective, if we, if, if we look at where this is all going to end up, because at some point in time the pain is intense enough for mm -hmm. radical action to be taken. Now we heard from government that the radical action uh, that is proposed is greater state intervention in the economy, which is, I suppose, one path towards solving the issues. Is there any other option and is there any other um, perhaps rock bottom, that will finally get people sobering up here? Again, uh, I think if one looks at what will be the consequence of this uh, very prolonged strike, uh, is that we'll probably see significant job losses in the mining sector. Uh, if you look at Amplatz's Rustenburg operations, uh, clearly it will never be viable again. Uh, it was already, already marginal at, uh, in, in terms of the previous sort of uh, labor negotiations. So I think uh, with significant job losses, I think there will be a realization that actually we need to step in and we need to make an environment which is not only conducive for future employment levels, but also to allow companies to make a decent return. And in that way, obviously, um, have them employ more people into the future as well. And that realization will come only when we see the significant job losses uh, that will come as a consequence of this uh, strike. Yeah, I guess there's the other side of the coin is that as the uh, industry finds itself more and more constrained by labor issues, it might just mechanize more and then those, uh, that hope for increase in employment won't come through anyway. Mm. That's right. And I think when, uh, in the past, uh, these mining companies have always tried to link wage increases to productivity levels. Clearly, if you have a machine, that machine can work 24-7. Uh, and the produ productivity there would be significantly higher compared to uh, a laborer, for example, or a rock drill operator. Uh, so from that point of view, I think um, at least linking wage increases to productivity gains and productivity levels uh, and, in, and at the very least, so get a benchmark in terms of what productivity levels are for laborers versus mechanization. Uh, already, if one looks at the stats uh, that have come through in terms of mechanized mines in South Africa, they are significantly more productive compared to labor-intensive mines.